Hello precious one. I'm so excited you're able to pick up a copy of this message today. It was recorded live at one of our services at Global Harvest Liberty Room Ibadan. And it's my prayer that the same anointing and grace that was present at that service will be present wherever you are watching this message today. You know Psalm 119 verse 130 says the entrance of his word brings light and understanding to the simple. So expect understanding, expect illumination and expect transformation. And I know after this message, your life will never be the same anymore. Thank you for picking this message up. God bless you. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Because he leaves, I can face tomorrow. Because he leaves, all fair is gone. I know you own my future. So my life is worth living because Jesus is alive. Can someone say amen to that? Jesus is alive. When I say Jesus is alive, I want you to say alive forevermore. Jesus is alive. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. So Hebrews chapter 12, we're taking the first three verses. I would read verse 1. You will read verse 2. And then I'll read verse 3. Can we do that together? Okay. Here begins the reading of God's word. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Verse 2. Verse 3, for consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. I'd like to choose for a title this morning, Overcoming Tough Times. Overcoming Tough Times. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for your word and we're grateful for the presence of your spirit. We know you're here because you said wherever two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in their midst. So we thank you because you're here. Let your presence be made manifest, O oh God. Let your anointing break yokes this morning. Let it remove strongholds in the name of Jesus Christ. Let it change our lives even by the power of your word. I ask for the fresh anointing to teach and to preach your word this morning to the end that only you and only you alone will be glorified in our midst as a church and in our lives as individuals. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. Everyone that believes that says amen. Hallelujah. We are blessed as a people to live in peculiar times or so it seems that we are called to be around and to be alive and to succeed and to prevail in such a time that we call the Trump era. It's become a phrase now that if somebody um, harasses you or, or does something to kind of put you down, they can say you have been trumped. Um, because Trump has a, a symbolic of something, a symbolic of, of, of aggression, a symbolic of power, symbolic of different things. And, and the, the world as we used to know it seemed to have changed. And we are faced with peculiarities on a global scale. And back home and back to Nigeria in particular, we know for a fact that in the last two going to three years, we've been confronted with the challenges in our economy and how we've had swings of, 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 of seeming hope and then sometimes it looks like it disappears faster than it appeared to us. We've been confronted with people losing their jobs down to right sizing or downsizing confronted with situations where people's businesses sometimes haven't done as well as they used to do at other times and sometimes the businesses are completely shut down. We've been confronted with the, the, 
the challenge of having to pay bills some of them have gone up without salaries going up market is not necessarily responding to the dollar as you will have expected they say sometimes when things go up they hardly come down and it, it's the challenge that we're faced with is the challenge that we're confronted with and today we seem to look at this peculiarity and the enemy gives us the impression that this is has never happened before we've never had to find ourselves on this kind of spot before but the, the lord sent me with a sure word of assurance to us today that no matter how tough these times are that you will overcome in the name of jesus christ as a matter of fact he, he said you not just overcome you have overcome and you will see the manifestations in the name of jesus christ and with, with, the, with the eye out to understand the challenges that we're confronted with uh, i wanted to realize that there is nothing new under the earth or under the heavens rather so if the first thing i want you to write down is that there's nothing new under the heaven there's nothing new tough times are not new there have been cycles of tough times there have been cycles of peculiarities this is not just the first uh, economic meltdown that we'll face as a nation if you've been alive long enough you know that our nation has gone through a similar cycle before how be it under the same kind of leadership it's interesting how life works and if you look all over the world you see that famines come and famines go today we're confronted with droughts in different places of the world but you know that going through your bible you find stories of famine again and again and again so it is really nothing new 9 to 11. ecclesiastes chapter 1 verses 9 to 11. the the solomon began to put it this way he said that's which has been is what will be that which is done is what will be done and there is nothing new under the sun is there anything of which it may be said see this is new it has already been in ancient times before us there is no remembrance of former things nor will there be any remembrance of things that are to come by those who will come after in other words solomon was saying if you can point at anything that is new let me know and then i can tell you that it has been in the ancient times it's, it existed before he said in verse 11 that the only problem is that there's no remembrance of former things people have lost the the the, the, the understanding or the reference to situations that has been before we came I, we're talking about that in the first service that I know we, we look at the world today and we, we think homosexuality is a new problem. We think same-sex same marriage is a new problem. But the truth of the matter is no, it's not a new problem. It's been there since the beginning. You ask yourself, why did God wipe out Sodom and Gomorrah? It was because of homosexuality. It was because of the sins they committed. You, you look at the issues of, of finance and all the problems and you really understand that it's the same old problem that's being repackaged by the devil. There's no new thing anywhere. It's the same old problem, just repackaged. Now, we have, we have, uh, uh, um, we have people who are willing to lay down their lives and die with people in a bit to, to kill them and to take themselves to eternity. It's not a new phenomenon. It's been around before now. Suicide bombers and all of that has been in existence, albeit packaged a bit differently. So the pressures that we're going through are not strange and they're not new to us. Those that have been ahead of us have gone through similar problems before. As a matter of fact, if you take a stock of your life, the chances are that something you're faced with right now, you might have had a bit of that challenge in time past. I'm sure it might not be the first time that you're going to have a financial challenge in your life. It might not be the first time you're going to have a marital challenge. And I want you to understand that the God that helped you then, it will help you now. I said God will help you now in the name of Jesus so you realize that the world as we have it is just confronted with the same thing repackaged and there's no new thing under the earth in first John chapter 2 John spoke about the loss and the pride in our world he said first John chapter 2 verses 15 and 16 he said do not love the world 
of the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it is, it is of the world. It says the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And child of God, this Bible was written about 2,000 years ago. And 2,000 years ago, somebody was talking about lust. And 2017, lust is still everywhere. It's the same thing. Package, repackage. All that the enemy has is just the same old thing. But I tell you, under God, you will overcome. Now, the Bible began to say to us, Jesus, speaking in this wise, said that, that, that um, John 16, verse 33, Jesus said, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. Everybody say peace. It says, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. He said, in the world, there will be tribulation, but we should be of good cheer because he will overcome the world. What has he done? He has overcome the world already. So whatever it is you're faced with today, Jesus already overcame. I said, Jesus already overcame. That's why we like Easter. Because at Easter, we remember the victory. We remember the sacrifice. We remember how they hung him high and stretched him wide. We remember how he took upon himself the sin of the world and then nailed it to the cross. We remember how he defeated the devil and hell through the cross. Through the cross of Jesus, our victory is guaranteed. So the Bible says we overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of our testimony. If you're more than a conqueror, shout hallelujah. Back to 1 John chapter 2 from verse 12. 1 John chapter 2 from verse 12. It says, I write to you little children because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. Help me tap and say my sins are forgiven. Verse 13, I write to you fathers because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you young men because you have overcome the wicked one. Someone say I have overcome. I write to you little children because you have known the father. And I've written to you fathers because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one let me turn to that neighbor say hello neighbor it doesn't matter the color of your skin the size of your hair of the clothes on your back say if you're a child of God you have overcome the wicked one do you really believe that say amen in the house it says we have overcome so you were born an overcomer i said you were born an overcomer i said you were born an overcomer before you started the war you won the battle already you won and you got the victory through jesus christ hallelujah you already have the victory so all we're doing is just working out what god already did for us it's just enforcing the victory on the earth. That's what all of this is about. And as we go through history, maybe the second thing, I told you, you already overcome. You can put that as number two. You have already overcome. Number three is that there are people, we look at our world and we see no matter what the challenge is, there are people that have overcome physically. There are people that have gone through that thing and gone through it well. There are people who have gone through similar challenges and they came out victorious. Hallelujah. I said they came out victorious. 